Welcome to English Without Borders Thursday series of webinars. And today I'm really happy uh, to host uh, our outstanding teacher trainer, specialist, uh, Lisa Mann. And sh today she will talk about low tech resources. And for those who are just joining English Without Borders webinars for the first time, I would like to introduce uh, Lisa Mann. Lisa Mann has enjoyed a long career in the field of applied linguistics and over the years, uh, she has worked as an English language instructor, program director, uh, teacher trainer, and translator. In 2017, she worked with the Peruvian Ministry of Education to develop the national curriculum for English for adult basic education. In 2019, she served as an instructor and interim academic coordinator for Webster University's newly established MATSOL program in Tashkent, Uzbekistan. Two years later, she worked with the TESOL International Association to co-develop and co-deliver the blended TESOL core certificate program as part of Uzbekistan's English Speaking Nation Initiative, a large scale project designed to sharpen the skills of up to 15,000 secondary school English teachers uh, all over the country. Lisa has worked as an English language specialist in Tajikistan on three occasions to provide professional development workshops to university and secondary school English language instructors. And she's also uh, doing webinars for English Without Borders uh, since last year. And of course, like uh, currently Lisa is uh, uh, located in Spain. She works and uh, lives there. And with great pleasure, I'm giving the floor to our dearest Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. The floor is yours. Thank you, Nasiba. Uh, so uh, I'm happy to see people from all over the world here uh, to tonight, this, this afternoon, people from Mexico and Brazil, and of course, our beloved Tajikistan. Um, I am in Spain, but as uh, Nasiba said, I'm working now with uh, English Without Borders in Tajikistan, so I feel a close connection to your country. Uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen. So today we're going to talk about uh, low tech uh, resources uh, because uh, in the last few years, there's been a huge explosion of wonderful online resources as we were all forced to start teaching online due to the pandemic. Uh, but a lot of people, a lot of teachers uh, can't really use those uh, those wonderful materials and resources because they simply don't have that kind of uh, technology in their classroom uh, or they don't have it at home. So we're going to talk today about uh, different low tech resources and I, I should maybe have called this low tech reusable resources, because the point of most of these is that you have them uh, when once you have them, you can use them again and again and again uh, with your students. So before we get started, let's do a little brainstorm um, and just write in the chat, what kinds of additional materials do you very often use in your classes and where do you get them? So in addition to your textbook, what other materials do you use and where do you find those? So just write your answers in the chat, if you will. Okay, Natia says she creates her own materials, the grammar handouts. Do you get those from the uh, internet, the grammar handouts? or from a book from the internet. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Handouts from American English. Good one, Nasiba. Games and activities, you make up some authentic materials. Good, you download from the internet. Yes, from YouTube. Good, good, good. So the internet is just has just a wealth of, uh, of wonderful materials we can use. Um, and you, you can use, um, you can use them for online and in-person classes. TED Talks and things like Flapchat and things uh, like YouTube, those are wonderful if you have uh, the technology in your classroom, but very many, many teachers don't have technology in their classroom. They don't have a computer, they don't have a projector, uh, they don't have those things you need. And Mary says she uses pictures, that's good. Okay, so that's one of the low-tech resources we'll talk about today. Um, 
Busy Teacher is a great site. Yeah, all of those. Good. So these are the things we're going to talk about today. These kinds of low text resources using images. So using pictures um, that you can get from the internet or you can just cut from magazines. Um, when I when I moved to this apartment, I had a, a huge box of magazines, uh, uh, magazine pictures that I had glued to the backs to cardboard and I use them in my classes all the time. But I thought, well, it's the internet age. I probably don't need these and I threw them away. And now I feel really, uh, I really regret that because they're always good to use um, with classes. We'll talk about using flashcards in different ways and how to build flashcard sets. Um, and, a, and we'll talk then about using the world around you. Someone mentioned um, realia and that's uh, part of what using the world around you includes. Um, so we're gonna take a look at a set of images and for each image, I'm gonna ask you a question. Um, and the questions might be, uh, how could you use the image to elicit or practice a grammar structure? So to get students to start using a grammar structure, to elicit or practice new vocabulary or review previously learned vocabulary as a writing prompt, what is it? Uh, 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 something to encourage them to start writing or as a speaking prompt. It's something that would encourage them to start speaking. So when I show you the image, I'll put a question in the, in the chat and then you um, answer the question in the chat as well. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit about how we might use these images. Using images is a fantastic way to, um, to get your students talking, but also you can use them for grammar. And that's something that they're rare, rarely used uh, for, but it's a wonder, wonderful uh, source. So um, here is a picture. And what do you think? Which grammar structures uh, could you teach or practice uh, using this photo? So just see if you can answer me, which grammar structures could you teach or practice using this photo? And please don't say the present continuous. I mean, it's true, but the present continuous, um, it can be used with any photo. So all of them, the present continuous. Farouk says the passive. How might we do that? The present, Farouk? How can you use the present? To show me a little bit of what you mean. Because the passive, Coffee was spilled on the laptop. Mm -hmm. Fernando, good. What would you do if you spilled coffee? Yeah, good. If not, see what. What would you do if you spilled coffee on your laptop? Uh huh. Good. That Fernando, you said that too. Uh, the present simple. You, you, I can't really see how you would use that, but maybe you have an idea. And yeah, the coffee was spilled. Okay. Adjectives like adjectives about what? Be a little bit more specific so I know what you, what you mean. Like about his how he looks, shocked, okay, about his feelings, yeah, shocked, uh, yeah, good. A mass, you use vocabulary like a mess, spilled, poured, stressed, <laughs> about stress management. Okay, good. Let's look at, um, let me ask you one more question. Um, How could you use this photo as a writing prompt? And remember that a prompt is a starting point for oral or written expression. So a writing prompt is when you show your students a picture and you say, uh, I want you to blah, 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 you tell me, how, right? What could they write uh, with this as a starting point? What kind of uh, writing could you ask them to do? A descriptive paragraph. Yeah, good. Yeah. A create a story. Yeah, this man's name is Abdul. He works at, and here's where maybe the present simple can come in. Uh, Farouz, I, mean, I think it was you or 
I'm not sure who said that now, but he works at IBM. He has a very important deadline. And uh, just as he was getting ready to press, press send, uh, he spilled his coffee on his laptop. Yeah. OK, you can give some situations and ask students to figure out possible responses. Yeah, that's good. OK, what about as a speaking prompt? Uh, how can we use this to make our students speak? Uh, good, Galero, what, how, what would you name this picture? Yeah, good. If you had to give a title to this picture, what would you name it? That's good. Okay, good, Nasiba. See, this is what I mean by a prompt. It's a starting point for an oral uh, conversation. So imagine you could say to two students, okay, imagine you're this man in the picture and you have to make a, an excuse to your boss about why your work is late, yeah? Or you have to describe to the IT department what happened to your computer, yeah? Good, you can just describe the pic, yeah. Good, what do you... See. And at the most basic level, at the lowest level of our students, that's what we'll be asking them. Yeah, what do you see in the picture? Just looking for nouns. Yeah, just so they can name uh, the basic nouns that they see, and maybe some actions, some verbs. I see a man. I see a computer. I see a notebook. I see a desk. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, Munir. Imagine yourself in this man's position. Let's look at another photo. Now this one is a drawing um, and drawings are also uh, good. Uh, you often have a little bit more freedom with uh, drawing. Um, and what kind of grammar could we uh, elicit from this uh, picture, do you think? We have a picture of a farm. What kind of grammar could we use? Like that. Yeah, the continuous for all of them. Yes, the continuous. Ah, good. Oh, here we go. The present simple. What do these people do every day? Yeah. Uh, what What are they? What are their habits? What are they? What do they have to do? Maybe have to and must. Yeah, those modal verbs. Yeah. Some a few action verbs, but they're kind of unusual ones. Uh, she's feeding the chicken. Uh, she's milking a cow. He's shearing the sheep. So the verbs here are a little bit strange, um, but they are talking about things that you have to do every day. And in a lot of our rural environments, these are things that people have to do. They, uh, they are part of their lives, yeah. When I was in Tajikistan a few years ago, I visited a teacher who was, um, who was working and she said she woke up every morning and she had to milk the cows and make breakfast for everyone and then she had to go to work and I thought oh you work so hard but that's the reality of a lot of people who live outside the city they do they have animals and they have families and they have to do all of these things every day good someone said compare different cultures and that's true um, uh, this is a, a really good, even within your own country, comparing different ways of life, right? The, the country life versus the city life. And um, this would be a nice way to start that conversation. Yeah? Um, I have never, for example, I have never milked a cow in my entire life. I'm from the city. I've never fed a duck. <laughs> I've never done any of these things. So uh, these are uh, interesting conversations that your students can have. Yes, active and passive. Yeah, for yeah, you could do that. Yeah, uh, yeah. The you could say, for example, uh, the ducks are fed before breakfast. Yeah, the the cows are milked before we go to school, and without saying who exactly does that. Yeah. Okay. Look at this one. Now, how might we use this uh, picture with our students? What might we, for example, for a speaking prompt? Uh, if we wanted to ha uh, get our students to talk and use this picture as the starting point for something to say, what could we, what could we, how could we use it? Okay, what did the child do? <laughs> he has not yet talked. <laughs> what did the child do? The if clause, yeah, if clause again. 
the verbs are expressive motions, yes. But I'm thinking more of a speaking prompt, like a conversation, maybe a role play uh, between this boy and his parents. For example, a good one, Fernando, have you ever done anything similar? Yeah, do you have any brothers or sisters who have done anything? Uh, and cause and effect is a good one. <laughs> you can talk about um, uh, strict uh, strictness of parents and, and whether, what would you do if you were this child's mother or father? Yeah, what would you, uh, how would you react? Uh, would you be angry? Would you be amused? Would you think it's cute? Um, what would you do? Yeah, and what should his punishment be? Should he be punished or, or not? Yeah, exactly. What would you do, Mary, if you saw him? Should he be punished for this or is this just what kids do? It's just normal and natural. Uh, and lastly, this one, and this one is um, very typical of the, hey, typical of the kind of thing that works well with teenagers because it's a picture of teenagers and or maybe not teenagers. Now I notice that this guy's drinking a beer. <laughs> it looks like some, maybe they aren't so young, um, but these guys are all uh, looking at their phones. So you could start by leisure, leisure activities. Comparatives is a good one with this one. Mm -hmm. Phones in our daily life, Munir, and that's what I was thinking as well, is that uh, the, our teenagers are so connected to their phones. And uh, I don't know, I think it's a good, conversation to have with them about um, the use of their phones and how often they do it. Yeah, good, the 21st century, yeah, good. And how maybe comparison 21st century versus 20th century, uh, you as your, yourself as the teacher, how you grew up and how these children are growing up today. Very good. So these pictures are all from the internet, but they don't have to be. I mean, you, you could just cut them out of magazines and, and paste them to a, a hard piece of a hard backing and then use them again and again and again. Because as we see, you can use them for grammar and then two weeks later, use them as a speaking prompt. And then, uh, you know, a week later, use it as a way uh, to start your students writing about something. You could use it to uh, re renew and remember vocabulary. So these pictures are something that you can just have sort of, we say in English, up your sleeves have, uh, as a sort of a backup uh, whenever you want to get your students to, to do a little bit of uh, speaking with speaking, writing, grammar with, uh, with a real object that's very colorful. These are more engaging very often than uh, a, a textbook can be. And students who like to touch things and like to see things find pictures very uh, stimulating and engaging. Yeah. Now another uh, low tech resource uh, are flashcards. Do any of you use flashcards with your students? The flashcards usually have a picture on one side and then on the back they have the word. Yeah. Do any of you use them ever? Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, yeah, flashcards are great. Um, you know, uh, with, with good, I'm glad with Gutierrez, you use them a lot. You can use them as a sort of a standing um, a static uh, warm up when your students come in. I teach adults mostly, but I still use flashcards. And when they come in, they just take a few minutes and, and do some flashcards. Mine are in Spanish and English so that they can learn some sort of higher level vocabulary. But uh, whenever a kid finishes first, for example, uh, everyone else is still working and so one kid finishes first, you can hand them a pack of flashcards and say, practice with these for a few minutes. Um, uh, what, while everyone finishes up, yeah? So if you have these again up your sleeves, they're wonderful um, ways to, to supplement your lessons and you can use them again and again and again. What I want to share with you now is a place where you can make um, really wonderful flashcards that fit your needs and then you can download them. I usually plasticize them, that is put some plastic on the outside and then, um, uh, and then use them for years and years and years. So I'm gonna share with you my screen with a, um, a site called Send Teacher. You can find it, where is it? I 
just one second. I have it open here. I don't know. I don't see it. Oh, yes, here it is. Okay. So this is called SEND Teacher. SEND stands for uh, Special Educational Needs. Now, this is not an English teaching site, but it does, um, it does have a wonderful collection of free printable materials, uh, and especially these flashcards that I'm talking about. But it, when, not, when we're finished here, it's just send, sendteacher.com, I think. When we're finished here, I do encourage you to explore this site because beyond flashcards, it just has a ton of stuff. So uh, in Send Teacher, you go here to printables. Sh well, shall I send you the link so you can, um, so you can also look at the same time? No, just watch me and then we'll do it together or you can do it on your own time afterwards. So uh, you go to printables. And there are all kinds. I know that some of our um, the teachers who join us teach uh, CLIL, so they teach things like math and, and science in English. Um, but the one that uh, we're going to go to for the flashcards is literacy. Okay, click on that one. And there are all kinds of different things that you can use. This is wonderful. You put this on a, uh, you can change all the words and you put this on a piece of card and the kids can spin it and then they have to make a story or something like that. Um, and here in printables literacy, we're gonna look at these cards, word and picture cards. I'm just gonna click there. Okay, so these are already made, but if we want to make our own, we can just click delete all cards. Yes, delete all cards, and then add a card. Now, the cards can be um, about anything you want. So can you type into the chat um, something that you might teach your students? Let's think of a, a, let's think of a lexical set, so uh, a topic. What's a good topic? food or transport, shopping. Okay, good. Like for clothes or for, let's, let's do clothes. Okay, so let's search. So then you click here on the bottom, symbol search. And I don't really know what, I always just click all of three of these, why not? Okay, school things. Okay, let's, let's do school things. And maybe that's a little bit better. And then so you, you just type in the thing that you want, for example, a ruler and search. Okay, so they found three results. I like this one. I'm gonna make a label for it, ruler, and then click save. And now I have this. Now you can have it where it, uh, the text is not under the picture. So it's you can fold that in half and then you'll have the word on one side and the picture on the other. You can have it where the there's just the picture. Or if you click here, you can have it with the word underneath. Yeah, it depends on the level of your students and how much help you, you want to give them. So let's add another card here. Chalk, uh, Farouk says. So let's, that looks like a good one. We click symbol search here and just click look for chalk. Uh oh, it's showing us cake. Oh, here's some chalk. It's not such a great drawing, but I think we get the, the picture. Uh, we'll take this one. And so we click save. Oops, I didn't put a name on that one. Let's put chalk here. Now save. Okay, so again, you can just go filling these up and you had it put, well, let's make one more just so you see how it's done. We'll put, um, how about teacher? And oh, look at all these different ones. Uh, they have different, sometimes you find different um, sort of cultures represented here. It's, and there are men and women and uh, different types of teacher. Um, so it's, I don't know why these tigers are there. <laughs> Somehow they got confused, but let's click that one. We'll call that one teacher and that's it. Okay, and save. And then when you want to download, you can do as many or as few as you want. When you want to download them, um, you simply click here on print preview. Yeah. And then you click download PDF. 
and save it on your laptop or wherever you want to, yeah? And you can just print them out uh, once, you know, if you print them in color, it costs more money, but you only print them once because you have them, then you could put little plastic on them or something and then you keep them forever. And you always have those to use as, um, as cards. Uh, this site has cards, but it has a million other things too. So please do check it out. It's called Send Teacher. Um, and it's very easy to use and easy to, um, to navigate. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about once we have our cards, how can we use them? Um, there are lots of things you can use uh, those cards for. Um, sorry. Oops, what's happening? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna just show you uh, one way that uh, I use cards with my students. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of cutting and pasting to do. Everyone can click on that, that link, which will take you to a Jamboard, um, but don't touch it yet. Just look at it. It's there too. Okay, so this is the Jamboard, and this is if you're teaching online. I know this <laughs> this webinar is called Low Tech Tools, and I'm I'm showing you how to do it online, but we'd have no choice, right? Because I'm not there with you. Uh, but you can do this printed out with the cards on a table. Yeah, so imagine you have to imagine that we're doing it in a different way. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you a story, and I just want you to to listen and remember. Uh, what I say. Okay, so just listen to me reading you a story and try to remember it. Okay, ready? Here we go. Today I'm very happy because when I was walking home from school, I found some money, $10. I looked around, but the street was empty. So I put it in my pocket and continued on my way. Should I tell my mom? Should I tell my dad? No, I'll spend it on a nice cake for the whole family and everyone will love me. Nobody can possibly be angry when they're eating cake. Okay, so I'm gonna read it one more time. Listen carefully and listen to the order of events. So today I'm very happy because when I was walking home from school, I found some money, $10. I looked around, but the street was empty. I put it in my pocket and continued on my way. Should I tell my mom? Should I tell my dad? No, I'll spend it on a nice cake for the whole family and everyone will love me. Nobody can possibly be angry when they're eating cake. Okay, so now you've listened to that story and you have a pile of cards here. You can grab these cards uh, if, you have, if you're on the jam board. You can grab these cards and put them in order. And I want you to put them in order of the, uh, of, uh, of the order that I said them. If you're, if you're joining from a phone, I don't know if you can grab so well, but uh, if you're on your laptop, you just click it with your mouse and, and pull it around, yeah? See if you can put those in order that, so they match the story. Maybe you're <laughs> fighting with your with your mouses, trying to put them in different order. All right, looking pretty good. Are we finished? That looks a little bit disorganized there. What do you think, guys? <laughs> it seems you don't really remember the story very well. Uh, maybe you're all doing it at the same time. 
Okay. <laughs> okay, let's start at the left with the first with the first picture on the left and then we go like this. One, two, three, four, five, like that. Yeah, and then we'll start again here. I'm gonna read the story again because I don't think you remember. Yeah? Okay, here we go. Today I'm very happy because when I was walking home, so let's find happy and we have to put that one here in, in first position. All right, there we go. Because when I was walking home from school, home, yes, when I was walking home from school, there we go, I found some money. Good. Ten dollars. I looked around, but the street was empty. <laughs> the street was empty. Good. Uh, I put it in my pocket and continued on my way. Should I tell my mom? Should I tell my mom? Should I tell my dad? Who put angry there? You know, aren't being very good. No, I'll spend it on a cake for the whole family. And everyone will love me. There we go. No, everyone will love me. Nobody can be angry when they're eating cake. Good. Okay, so the idea is that your students in small groups, they have this pile. They're all a little mixed up. You tell a story. So this is a listening activity that's also quite kinesthetic because your students get to move around. It's also visual. They get lots of different inputs here. But your students then try to remember the story and put it in order and they have to talk to each other to do that oh no no she said he, she was walking from home to school not school to home now they have to try to remember and talk to each other and then they put the put it in order and then they retell the story and now they have these clues they have this scaffolding to help them remember how the story went and they retell it to each other and you can even make it into a kind of a competition that the, the uh, group that retells the story closest to the original story, which you have, um, is the winner, right? So you can make it into a competition that way. And again, these are just flashcards that, you know, I just sort of chose them randomly and made up a story that matched them. But you can use any, you can make uh, this flashcards on that site I showed you to, um, to use whichever ones you want. And as a follow-up activity with more flashcards, you could have um, some other sort of uh, cards that maybe will in inspire your students to continue the story, right? So no, I, the last thing I said was nobody could possibly be angry when they're eating cake. So uh, they can carry on the story now with these cards, moving them around, putting them in order, uh, to continue telling uh, the story, yeah? So um, again, we're using this Jamboard because we're in, an, uh, in a virtual environment, but in the classroom, these would just be on their table, yeah? And they just use them that way. Okay. Share my screen again. Okay. So um, that's one way to use flashcards. And uh, I already showed, talked a little bit about um, how you can use them. Oops, sorry, I'm having a problem here. Sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry, I had a little, little issue there. One sec. Oh my gosh, <laughs> technical issues here, here we go. All right, so uh, I already shared with you a way for you to use these cards as well, you know, is when a students finish early or when they come to class uh, as a sort of a, a review or a, a practice before you start. 
Um, but there are other ways to use uh, flashcards in interesting uh, ways that are really engaging. Um, one of them that I like a lot is called beanbag toss. And for this, you need a beanbag, which is just a bag filled with beans or some other, uh, some other kind of, can be beans or rice or whatever. Uh, and you put the cards on the floor, all over the floor, yeah? And these are cards without the word on them. So just a picture. So the word maybe is on the back. And the students, uh, you say a word in, the, the, in teams, they have to throw the bean bag so it lands on top of the picture of the word you say. So if you say apple, they have to try to hit the word apple. And you can make this more competitive by making them try to get um, three in a row or you know, a five across, make it into a sort of a bingo game. But this gets them standing up, it raises energy a lot, and it's a useful way to, and memorable way to review vocabulary. Another way you can use them is with slap. And you know this game where you, you lay the cards out on a table and you say a word and they have to slap the picture, either with their hand or with a fly swatter or with something else that you, make um, you know, a long piece of paper or something like that. This is a competitive game and you know, students like competition. They like, to, they like to win, everybody does, right? And Pictionaries when they have to just draw the picture that's on their card and their team has to guess what they're trying to draw. And maybe you have some other ideas for using these flashcards. Do you use flashcards in any other different ways? No? Well, I hope um, you download some of those from the Send Teacher website, and then the next time I, I, I see you, you can share some wonderful ideas with us, or you can share them on our Telegram group. Find the missing flashcard. That's good. Yeah, and that would be a nice one for the storytelling activity that I just did with you, is that um, if there were missing parts of it, then they could fill those in uh, with their own uh, ideas. Yeah, good. All right, the, the, the third thing we're gonna talk about is using the world around you. Uh, and that means using things like realia. Realia just means anything that you bring from your own uh, environment. It can be, for example, a glass, or it could be a, a pair of scissors. It just depends on what you're um, teaching. So it very often is in, in um, in the English speaking world, when we're teaching English as a second language, as opposed to English as a foreign language, we tend to bring in things like um, menus from a restaurant or, uh, or um, brochures from a hotel or things like that. So let's look at a few functions and try to think of some realia. What could we bring in from our homes, from our environments to try to teach these functions. So imagine you're teaching uh, how to interact with a tourist who wants to buy something at a supermarket. What could you bring in? Uh, what kind of authentic material realia could you bring in uh, to help you with this, uh, with this lesson? Some food stuff, yeah, some different food. That's a good idea, yeah. Anything else? You know, when I was in Tajikistan a few years ago, uh, I needed to ask uh, for help. I was lost. Uh, and um, I asked uh, a young girl, a teenager on the street to help me find, I think it was, I was in Dushanbe, like the opera house or something. Well, she was so pleased that she finally got to use her English. And it was such a wonderful experience. So I think these kinds of role plays are really important. I see it says price tags. Uh, a tourist who wants to buy something at a supermarket, I don't think a map would be really um, helpful, but maybe um, some uh, like fake money or something. Yeah, somebody who doesn't understand the, the, the money system there or needs help with something like that. What about if you're teaching, uh, you're talking about upcoming events in your town or city? What kind of realia, what kind of authentic materials from the outside world might you use there? A good announcements, exactly. Posters, 
maybe, yeah. Yeah, good advert posters, uh, a calendar. When you teach the days of the week and the and the months of the year, a calendar is is the perfect thing for that. Yeah, you have that's the a piece of the real world right in front of you that they can use. TV commercials about the event if there are, but we're trying to keep it low tech, so uh, bringing in things like on paper maybe uh, if you need to. But TV commercials are also an option. What if you're uh, asking your students to give their opinions about different movies or movie genres? Pictures, posters, uh, this could be reviews, uh, you know, people from in the newspaper, I don't know if you, you can, you can probably get that in, in English not very often there, but uh, you might be able to um, find some reviews in, um, in, in some cities about different movies or different movie genres, yeah? And describing people's clothes, what would you bring in? What kind of things could you bring from home or from the environment? Different clothes, yeah, different types of clothes. Family photos, that's a good one. Yeah, that's really good because you can look and see how different people dress, yeah. You can ask your students to bring in their own clothes if you want to, yeah, bring in a, uh, everyone bring in a hat tomorrow or bring your, your national clothes, good. Yeah, good, all right. Um, if you're asking your students to practice exchanging information by telephone, uh, what might you have uh, as a as a sort of a prop? What kind of realia could you have? Well, you could have a telephone. <laughs> you could have a sort of a fake uh, telephone or a real telephone that they just don't use, but they're just exchanging information on the phone. So just that action of sort of pretending to be on the phone adds an, an element of of interest to what would normally would just be a, a, a conversation, right? So pretending to get, uh, use the phone, a real phone, uh, having a notebook, a real notebook maybe, or a, a real message uh, block that you have to take a message on. Um, these are the kinds of things that add interest to, um, to something that maybe uh, is kind of boring otherwise. Uh, good, ordering a meal by telephone. Oof, I wished I could do that in, when I, I was in Tajikistan. I needed that, I needed that lesson, yeah. Asking for giving directions, Nasiwa says a map, good. Anything else? A map is a really good one. Uh, a mobile map app, yeah, if, you're, if, you're, if you have that technology. Um, lots of people don't have the internet though. And a, just a map I think is a good one. Um, you could also just ask your students to sort of draw a map of their own town or their own village or their own city, or their own neighborhood and use that as a, um, as a way, as a prop, right? As, a, as something uh, used in the, in the dialogue. Um, Asking for and describing where things are, it's on, it's under, it's in, yeah, and that can be anything, you know, the pen is in the glass, the glass is on the table, my feet are under the table. Good flashcards as well. Placing an order at a restaurant, what kind of realia would you bring in for that from your home? What kind of items from your home could you bring in? to practice, to help your students practice placing an order. A menu, it doesn't have to be a digital menu. Remember this is low tech or we're talking about schools that don't have things like the internet and or even laptops or anything like that. So a real menu, <laughs> a real menu, uh, uh, real plates. Yeah, uh, you could bring in real plates if you trust your kids not to break them. You can put set up a real sort of situation where it looks like a, a, a restaurant with two plates and two glasses uh, uh, and 
forks and knives and someone is the waiter and they take an order on an order pad and the people look at a menu, you can set up the whole scene and it becomes a kind of an, a drama, right? Uh, in this role playing. Yeah, good. Okay, good, good. All of those are excellent ideas. And lastly, saying where people are from. Um, so in this case, for example, if you're talking about um, people who are from different countries and their national dress, uh, you might be able to do that. I know in Tajikistan, even from region to region, people kind of have slight differences in the way they dress. <laughs> so you could um, ask them to bring in things from home that maybe show where they're from. Uh, and and wear the wear those clothes, yeah. But you could also use flags, yeah. Good, Natia, flags um, to represent those, um, and people could just hold them. Uh, she's German, she's Russian, she's French, yeah. Very good. Okay, so um, we also could use the world around us by asking our students to go outside if it's possible. Sometimes schools have very strict, strict uh, restrictions about that. But in small villages and stuff that I found, the administration doesn't really care <laughs> what you do. If you have a, a, a small class of six or eight or 10 students and they go outside, um, it's, it's pretty natural in small, small places. So some ways you can use the world around you while you're outside is to have a scavenger hunt. Um, and that is where students have to sort of go around and find different things in the environment, like they, and they have a list of things that are um, that you've made. Um, for example, find a, a red flower and a blue car, and uh, yeah, and they have to go in small teams and go find these things and come back as soon as possible. Uh, if they have a phone, um, they can take a picture of it as proof. But if they don't, you just have to trust that they, they found it. They can go to places, yeah, you can take them on, on field trips, um, but these are just things that happen during your English lesson, yeah? So just during the one hour that you have them, for example. Uh, a tour of your school, you can have kids give each other a tour uh, where everything is. This is where the girls' bathroom is. This is the boys' bathroom. This is the principal's office. This is the canteen. This is the playground. Yeah, and show all of the different vocabulary um, that they have for this school. There's another game called Leading the Blind, and you just put students in groups of three, and one of them has a blindfold, so they tie like a napkin or something around their head, and the other two have to sort of lead them to a certain spot that you've marked on the floor, yeah. Um, and this is a way, this is a very intense listening and speaking uh, activity, uh, and you have to put down the rules very strictly, or kids will try to lead people into walls and things, but <laughs> yeah, uh, it's also super fun and they do enjoy that a lot. And it's practice of uh, things like left, right, um, yeah, slowly or two steps, things like that. Uh, and uh, bring it back is uh, uh, just when it's basically a sort of hide and seek. So you put something outside and you give them some oral dis uh, description of where it is and they have to go get it and bring it back. And so for example, it's outside to the left of the tree, behind the bench, under the blue slide. And they have to go out and get it and bring it back as fast as they can. So these are just uh, different ways that you don't, that you can, uh, practice English that are fun and that also don't require you to have an internet um, vacation. I mean, an internet, sorry, connection. All right, so that's pretty much the end of this uh, webinar, but I'd love to hear um, from you anything that you take away with you today that you might use with your classes, ways that you might sort of uh, uh, change these ideas so that you can um, uh, see that they fit in better with what you usually do. Uh, just type into the chat anything that you will that you think you might use. Good, thank you. I'm glad you like those activities. Good, excellent. So yes, 
do um that was called sun teacher that website i i told you i think it's just sunteacher.com um uh, yeah giving the tour is a good one you, i'm glad you're going to do that one i think that's a really really important one because your students there often they learn all of these things in um in the book and they don't really have a connection to their real lives but giving a tour of their school is a really nice way Okay, anything else or anyone, any questions uh, from anyone or from our, anyone joining us from Facebook or anyone here? Uh, thank you, Lisa. Now uh, we open the floor for questions and answers. The audience, please uh, put your questions in the chat box. Uh, we'll be, we'll be uh, addressing them to Lisa. Uh, so Lisa, I have a question. Uh, in many cases, like in Tajikistan, uh, teachers usually teach multi-level classes. So what would you recommend to use in, because like, you know, it's always a little bit difficult to manage multi-level classes. What would you recommend in this case? Well, one of, one of the things you can do, and one of the great things about those flashcards is that you can um, create them at any level you want them to be. And so for the lower levels, you can put the word on the bottom of the card so that the students can actually see the word there. And the students who have a little bit higher level, you can not put the word on the card at all, only the picture. And that way they can work with them in different ways. And one way they're, they're being reinforced with the word and the picture. And the other one, they're, they're using their memories and talking to each other to try to remember what those pictures mean. But you can also give them different stacks of cards. So one stack of cards maybe is um, has sort of lower level vocabulary and a different stack has vocabulary that's a little bit higher. And you can put them into two or four groups uh, and they'll be working with different cards doing basically the same activity, a storytelling activity, for example, but with different materials. That's a good question, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. And in case of like, you know, when you teach uh, really elementary level, so do you, uh, what is the best option uh, to use in this case? Like, uh, I mean, just whenever you teach pronunciation or just, you know, whenever you teach letters, what mm -hmm. would you recommend? Well, I, again, I, you know, I think that those, uh, those cards are fantastic for the really low levels because they are pictures of things that everyone recognizes and you don't have to translate it into Tajik or Russian or, or, or their, their, their L1 because they see it, they know what it is, they recognize it immediately and then they have the word under it. So I think teaching with those, um, if they're at just the vocabulary learning stage where they can't really put a sentence together yet, um, just giving them some sets of vocabulary using those cards is a good start. Yeah, thank you very much. We have a next question from Mavluda. She's asking, do you change the activities when teaching in different cultures? Yeah, you can change them as you uh, as you like. Again, the um, that send teacher. I, I don't know if you noticed, but when we did the Jamboard activity, the send teacher cards that I used, we had a, a Muslim lady with her hair covered. She was the angry one, but I think she was also the happy one in the beginning. Um, so the the images that you use uh, can be. Um, can be tailored to your students yeah the, the the for example the guy spilling his coffee on his laptop well you could just as well use a, a an image that uh, more uh, reflects your own culture or you think is more culturally appropriate so yeah with images that's the great thing about it is that it you can choose them how from your from your own uh, culture your own environment yeah yeah, thank you, Lisa. Uh, Marhabo is asking, what do you think of using L1? I, th I think that, you know, th there used to be a, a big um, push to not use any uh, L1 in the classroom, but, uh, uh, but that sort of changed uh, recently. And a lot of research has shown that, uh, that L1, using L1 is, uh, is actually 
beneficial to students in a limited amount because they also need to hear you speaking English, right? They need, they need that input. But rather than, for example, if you, uh, if they don't, if you're saying the word scissors and that you don't have any scissors and you're just trying to explain what scissors are in English and they're not understanding and they're not understanding, you just say it in one word in Tajik or, or in, or in uh, Russian, it just, it, it's faster, it's easier and everyone gets it in just a sec, right? So there are, um, there are advantages to using L1 and I think in limited proportions, I think it's fine. And very often with instructions, especially if you're, you're setting up an activity that's kind of complex, and if you're trying to tell the instructions and you, you're saying it very clearly as best as you can in English and they're still not getting it, well, just say, just say it in L1 and, then, and, and move on with your life, right? Uh, so yeah, I think L1 has a place uh, in, a, in, in a limited amount. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, next question, question comes from Fernando. He's asking, if you live in a small city where you have limited resources to explore Realia, what, what, what would you recommend? Yeah, well, Realia doesn't have to have writing on it. I mean, it, it, it can, um, but uh, you, can, you can download things from the internet if you, if, you, if you want something like a menu or create your own. Uh, you can make your own fake menu, right? And sometimes if you're... If you're practicing with, for example, uh, Tajik food uh, at a Tajik restaurant, you probably almost certainly aren't going to find a, a menu in English. So it's maybe better to just make your own material in that in that case, make your own fake menu. Yeah, but it, uh, reality can be anything. It can be a shirt or a, a fan or you know a glass, just to make it seem more um, more realistic when they're doing little role plays and and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent. Uh, thank you for sharing. And we also have a question from uh, Nate. She's asking, for adults, how can I use flashcards besides story writing? Well, there, I shared with you a few ideas here. Um, <clears throat> for example, uh, the beanbag toss, you can use them for, uh, for before uh, or after a lesson with kids who finish early, uh, finish early uh, just trying to remember the, um, the, uh, the, the words themselves for just for vocabulary, um, retention and vocabulary practice. Um, you can use them to, to try to ask them for grammar practice, for example. You could use, you could use the, the cards as prompts for writing sentences in the past, yeah, about what happened yesterday. Um, because sometimes you, they, you ask them to, to think of something um, off the top of their heads and they don't have an idea. Well, those pictures sort of help them to, to get some ideas about how they might, might talk about the past or the future. In that, in that page I showed you, Send Teacher, for example, there, there are some cards that are, um, pictures of the future, like with robots and, you know, flying cars and things. Uh, and you could use those as a way to practice um, will for predicting the future, for example. So it, it doesn't have to always be an invented story, but um, they, they, they're used as prompts uh, for practicing something else. So a starting point for another um, practice. Yeah, excellent. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Like, uh, you know, uh, today uh, we have received a bunch of new ideas and also just, you know, great resources that you shared. And uh, like uh, we can see in the chat box that uh, teachers are really grateful to you for sharing all those materials. And of course, yeah, we'll be sharing uh, Lisa's presentation on our website very soon. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Lisa, for such a wonderful webinar. And uh, in two weeks, yeah, we'll be having another webinar with Lisa. Uh, and of course, yeah, please be audience, uh, stay tuned on us and uh, don't miss these webinars. And next week, we are going to have another uh, speaker, uh, Tura De North. And please uh, uh, follow our pages on social media, on Instagram and Facebook uh, to learn more about English Without Borders activities. Thank you very much for your active participation. Be, uh, uh, followers 
uh, we are very happy to see you and wishing all of you to have a great evening, day and morning for some of you. Yeah, <laughs> so enjoy your day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks a lot.